So carrying on with some more Kentucky statistics. Um, first, I just wanted to mention it just because I came across it and I thought it was interesting. An article by Kevin Gostola, April 23rd, 2015, says convicting Bradley Manning in secret. So that's what we're doing right now. Bradley Manning, who's a, you know, a white male who fought valiantly in the military and uh, sought to wrong the rights of the war crimes that he had witnessed by giving the information to WikiLeaks, which he will be just like the um, uh, disclosure of the Pentagon Papers, uh, whose name escapes me right now. I know Mike Gravel helped bring about the Pentagon Papers during the Vietnam War, which showed that our government's been lying to us and was sending us into Vietnam to die for interests that had nothing to do with the American people wanting you know, democracy or freedom or helping us in any our national security in any way. Vietnam did not help uh, America. Every death that died in Vietnam, Vietnam the 75,000 American troops or the 4 million, uh, 2 to 4 million Vietnamese who died all died in vain. They all died in vain. So thank goodness for the Pentagon Papers. It's wild that Bradley Manning, Manning can be treated the way he's being treated when history uh, if it's to be of any judge, if it's to be of any ind indicator during the Vietnam War, well, see Bradley Manning as a hero. So he's being isolated, put into a cubicle, he's, you know, getting skinny, he's puking, and I, I don't know if he's been broken or not. I hope he hasn't been, and hope that he sees that there's a lot of support out there for him. But being a white male, it just shows you that, you know, that it's not a free ticket. So the Malcolm X Debate Club, you're wrong on that. Uh, you do have, you're right about white privilege, which is why there's three white women who control the Malcolm X Debate Club, uh, blue-eyed devils, right, who have apartheid, and half of them are on one side of the room, and the other half are on the other side of the room, so they make sure that the white folks, the white women, have all the good stuff, all the good desks and the good supplies, and will they stand up to the white pay paymasters of L or... Louisville, nah, they laugh at Occupy. They laugh at the global revolution, um, which is also why they lost so many of their matches. So, yeah, we got apartheid <laughs> right there in the Malcolm X Debate Club, um, which which isn't isn't cool, but it also shows that just because you they said that I couldn't be in it because I'm a white male. Well, being a white male doesn't mean I've had a cupcake of an existence. Frankly, I think my struggle trumps my whiteness. Just like a homeless person, I've been homeless before. I've had, uh, you know, I've I've had my share of troubles, and I've had been in a, a spot when I needed someone someone's couch to stay. So, uh, you want to go up to homeless white people and tell them about all the privilege that they have? That's what Malcolm X Debate Club is doing. They're going to white poor whites and they're telling them about all their privilege, thinking that they're going to become their friends. Um, when they're not really actually, you know, they're not confronting the the white paymasters who. Uh, can do something about it, so they're not actually attacking those who have power, they're attacking the powerless, and they're not really talking about privilege. Okay, homeless person, yeah, he's got white privilege, but you know what you got over the white homeless man? You've got food privilege, you've got housing privileges, you've got clothe, clothing privileges, and those are privileges. A privilege is when you have a benefit that is better than somebody else. If you have something that is benefiting somebody else, um, even in my uh, educational psychology class, we did this pretty cool thing with a socioeconomical circle where we all got in line and people that had struggles, lives, and, you know, would step forward and people that had privileges would be stepping back. And I, I was farthest one than anybody else. Most of them have cars. They got the privilege of a car. And so the whiteness study says that you're supposed to use your whiteness in order to attack the privilege of whiteness which I understand and I get and I can do you know as much as I can still poor whites so it's not like I'm the mayor I'm the, you know Farrah Ramsey's or the uh, board of trustees or the the student uh, council so it's not like I actually have any type of formal institutional power um, but the, the using that same exact logic some of those people the folks who are uh, benefiting from food so this is everybody that's benefiting from food, cars, uh, clothing, housing. I don't give a damn what race you are. Asian, Caucasian, German, Irish, African American, black, just African, whatever you want to call yourself. Whatever it is you want your identity to be. Uh, ultimately, if you have food and you've got a car and you've got clothing and you've got housing, then you have a privilege. 
And the same logic with whiteness studies is that you should use your car privilege to get everybody who doesn't have a car those privileges. You should use your food privileges to make sure that people who don't eat are able to eat. So it's, it's kind of uh, theoretical. It's a little bit abstract, you know, to use your car to get other people some cars. But that's, that's pretty much the argument, which I agree with, which I agree with. But I had a two-pronged argument, and that just blew their minds. That blew their fucking minds. Yeah, so I kind of went on a weird rant there. <laughs> little little sidebar. But uh, Kentucky stats. So one out of the four Kentucky children are poor. This just came out recently. I knew this a long time ago, but they're saying that it's increasing, so it's getting worse than what it had been before. Um, you know, so I think that it's it's important for everybody in Kentucky to understand what's going on, and we everybody's to blame in Kentucky for allowing ourselves to go down the ditch. The owners are more so to blame, but the people who are not paying attention and not using the laws on the books, especially uh, Section 4 of Kentucky's Constitution, and Section 4 of Kentucky's Constitution legitimates a revolution. So Section 4 of Kentucky's Constitution reads as follows. The power is inherited in the people, the right to alter, reform, or abolish government. That's the tagline. Here's the actual wording from William Justice Goebbels, Constitution, 4th Kentucky Constitution. Um, this is both, America and Kentucky's. But all power is inherent in the people, and all free governments are founded on their authority and instituted for their peace, safety, and happiness, and the protection of property. So peace, safety, Happiness and the protection of property. Peace, so peaceful conditions, not a police state looking, going around looking for trouble and starting fights and issues where they do not exist. Safety, being able to live in a police state-free world where you aren't just getting attacked just because of being a young white male or being a young male, which is the young men are the highest percentage of... Uh, um, are targeted by the police are young men and more so for black folks so uh, peace safety happiness and the protection of property so happiness and property I got my questions with property but I see uh, it's it's institutionalized in America so I don't think we'll be able to get away from it too much without a, ma a mass major mobilization so happiness peace safety and protect protection of property peace safety happiness so all powers inherited in the people, and they're founded, all free governments are founded on their authority, and they're instituted for those reasons. So for the advancement of peace, safety, happiness, and the protection of property, the people have at all times an ineligible and indefeasible right to alter, reform, or abolish. Abolish their government in such a manner as they may deem proper. So the Kentucky people are allowed to abolish their government in such a manner as they deem proper. We can abolish the government however we properly decide of it. So if the whole, the whole state wants to pull a French Revolution, we are uh, defended by doing something like that. If the French Revolution was to happen because there's so much general discontent in Kentucky that all the people were rising up and they took over the, the, the Capitol and the courthouses then that would be defended by our Constitution. It would be the right thing to do, and it would be defended by our own Constitution. So it would be legal and the moral thing to do. And in Kentucky, we've had the same problems forever. Uh, Appalachia still looks the same as when Robert Kennedy visited there 40 years ago. Or uh, LBJ, when he went there and declared his war on drugs, uh, or war on poverty in um, Inez, Kentucky. LBJ went to Inez, Kentucky, and that house is still tattered. And that county, Martin County, is still impoverished. 60% of Letcher County doesn't even have running water. 60% of Letcher County doesn't even have running water. So that's third world country standards right there. It's when most people don't even have running water. So you, the rich people want to sit there and take all the credit for everything that they've ever done. Did you have running water? Man, how would you be able to survive if you didn't have running water? Did you have shoes? Did you, were you living out in these Fishervilles, out in the woods? These, uh, the institutions matter. The water, the energy, the uh, uh, electric, um, 
you know, cable, any of the institutions out there, sewage, um, are they're important things. They're important things. So the the owners are more important uh, targets for why we have the system that we have. But we live in a democracy, and if we had a sustained uh, popular populist group of folks, if we had people that would be outraged and put the pressure on our decision makers and make them make the right decisions, then we could actually change things. But until then, we're on the sidelines or until we actually become the candidate ourselves, until we're actually in office ourselves. And that's one of the ways to get power, really, is when you run for office, you've got a bullhorn. You have a mega horn, and people are listening closer to you than they've ever listened to you before, um, especially if they think that you've got a shot at getting the, uh, the coveted official's seat. So that's a, that, that's a little bit, I guess that finishes the, uh, the, the uh, statistics that I had ready there. Um, some of the ideas that I had to, for solutions for Kentucky, and I still think they're valid today, I kind of wanted to read this ordinance. Maybe I can read the ordinance later. The um, solutions that I have, I wanted to stop the politics to pass a law that makes all county and city officials put their budget and their minutes online. So all city governments, all county governments, all, all governments, state governments, their budget and all their minutes should be online. It should be a transparent organization. And, and I don't even think that would solve anything. I mean, I think that would put their information out there, but you'd have to have somebody reading and checking on the information that's being put out there. Somehow you can get an open records request, but that goes through a process. The minutes and the budget, that should be public information. We should have police accountability. The police should be tested on the Bill of Rights, since that is also law. Uh, that's law in addition to uh, the, the other, you know, anti-seatbelt laws and other oppressive tactics that they have on the books. Um, but the, the, so not only should they stop troublemakers, but they should also enforce the amount of trouble Americans are allowed to create. We're allowed to stand on the sidewalk. We're allowed to have pass out flyers. We're allowed to protest on the sidewalk as long as we're not stopping um, movement. These things are legal in Kentucky and America. In fact, when you combine Kentucky's Bill of Rights with America's Bill of Rights, Kentucky's got substantial more Bill of Rights. I don't know than other states, but I know that we got plenty of, of uh, rights that are written on the books. Another thing for police accountability, we can criminalize enhancement charges. So a lot of times they'll bust somebody for you know, a small amount of heroin or something else, and then they'll stretch it out to be, uh, you know, a, rep a repetitious criminal, or they'll say um, um, other things, uh, distribute it, intent to distribute, if it's a close to a uh, school district, whether there's children around or not, they can put it around, you know, say that it was around children. So these are enhancement charges. Prosecutors like to do that because it pads up the resume and gets more convictions and more uh, crimes assigned to people. Uh, but that they should be criminal. We should establish a citizens' complaint authority board, uh, so the citizens are over the police, so that there is a citizen group that has uh, that. If we had complaints, we can go to. I probably won't finish this either. Well, the bigger ones, let's see. Well, I like that all the police academy codify the proper procedures for cop watch, so the people can um, uh, uh, have a video camera and they can follow the police and make sure that they're not. Uh, beating people up and using their authority too much, uh, but to make sure that the police are not nervous and to make sure that they know who you are and that you have a vest on and that you are are doing something that you know is peaceful and legal. There should be proper procedure for that. There should be public surveillance. Uh, well, if there are public surveillance cameras, they should be accessible to the public. So all surveillance cameras that's already out there now. The public should be able to see them in the courthouse, in the city buildings, in the city hall, in uh, Frankfurt. And all police officers should have personal surveillance equipment just like they're doing in Boone County. So that way all police officers are being held to account for. We need democracy now. We should allow 18 year olds to run for all offices. There's this uh, really strict age restrictions in the Constitution which allows 18 year olds to not be allowed to run for most offices. There's only one low office that 18-year-olds can run for. Um, and a bunch of other stuff. But 